I'm excited to, one, be here and have you all attend this next hour because I've been not only waiting for the past 35 minutes for all of you to log on and get to kind of hear what's going on and what we've got for you in this program, but also the webcast is uh, sponsored by Propel. I have a, a passion for what I'm about to talk to you, doctors, because my background as a general practitioner, as you know, in the past 19 years, I've been not only talking about some movements and some of the uh, teeth movements that we end up having uh, that are difficult sometimes in, in the orthodontic world and trying to make sure that we are guaranteeing our, our, our tooth movements in the right placement in the occlusion. And, you know, sometimes it's difficult because for us, we are not getting the predictable movements that we want. And I just sometimes wonder if, if it's me or is it some of the products that I'm using. And the goal today uh, and, and what the sponsorship of the Propel is for me today in webcasting is understanding from diagnosis to finish, planning, treatment planning, releasing those stubborn movements. And I'm a big fan of Invisalign. I have always been in the aligner treatment, uh, and, and especially in the past nine years, we're pushing just our, our, our 900th case and pushing the envelope with more difficult, challenging movements. And how can we get these effective integration of what the ClinCheck software is telling us and where we can actually put these teeth in line? And those of you who've done some Invisalign and those of you who are doctors who are listening, you know, even in the business and professional code, in the ADA code, uh, in the dental board, uh, one of our key positioning is diagnosis by surgery or other methods and correction of malpositions of human teeth and the alveolar process. Now, for me, this is a big deal because not only are we screening, diagnosing, but we're providing treatment. And I like to talk about case selection. I like to talk about some of these cases that are going to be a little bit more predictable. So in our treatment today, we're going to learn, and I'm going to take you on a journey of understanding these teeth movements from simple to difficult. And this first part of our two-part series is going to be particularly about case selection using tooth movements, mechanical movements, and biological movements that allow us in seeing these types of patients where before in simply moving a canine, as you can see back in 2011, this case was published by Align. It was a great case, but it took me 11 months to get her to a simple movement that we now, and by the time we're done with the webcast, you can see that these cases can be done in half the time and more predictable with less refinements and being able to tell the patient confidently, yes, we can put these teeth in the position that we are trying to get it. Now, again, in my particular case, going back in the history of Invisalign galleries, you know, I've, I've, I've played with class one, class twos, and even class three. We've done some surgical cases. And, you know, some of these patients who would come to our office in asking, how long is my treatment time, or can this be done within this line? In this particular case, another published case, uh, you know, his concern was not only the lateral, but can we actually get his narrow arch widened? Can we actually get him a better, and again, you know, with the movement of the sleep apnea and some of these uh, occlusion movements that have always been there, but now you start to recognize, how do I get this teeth movements in predictable spots? Well, in this particular case, it took me about 13 months to get him to a position where he was comfortable and I was comfortable, but I don't quite like this finish, but he was tired. You know, we call that aligner fatigue. After 13 months, he said, look, Dr. Ty, I'm happy, I I'm good, I I'm done. Well, as a clinician, you're not quite just right yet. Can we do a little bit more? And for him, a little bit more meant another four or five months. So these are the challenges that we face in our practice. And when you start to learn about cases and you start to have that minor tooth movement as your bag of armatarium and you start to select cases that have the crowding, the laterals that are in crossbite, then the narrowing of the arch, and most importantly, 
the smine line itself, and one of the things I always say is the byproduct of a good bite is having a fantastic smile. So we want to make sure that these patients, we can tell them, look, we can do this predictably, or we can do two or three or four maybe possible refining and re re retooling. And in this particular case, again, another published case, now we're advancing from 2010, we went to 2012, and now here we are in the published case of 2013, 22 months later, 22 months later with three refinements, which still is success to in the orthodontic world of what we were, because his options were given of pulling out the lateral incisor or maybe pulling out some other additional teeth with the crowding, and that's not a great option, but 22 months, he was a very patient man. And for me, I wanted to find out if there's other avenues. So I realized that I have to minimize refinements, eliminate those mid-course corrections when we're doing these types of aligner tooth movements, and finish on time, because that aligner fatigue, we have to eliminate that from the patients. So the content of today is talking about a product line, a device that I've been very happy with, and that's Propel. Propel is a class one uh, FDA registered patent device. It's the uh, first and only product that enables clinicians to help, in my opinion, uh, remodel uh, a, a much greater. And we're going to see the science behind this and is it safe? Is it something that I want to introduce in my armamentariums of teeth movements? And the answer is absolutely and we'll get to that in a few minutes doctors and you know it, it's typically about a three minute uh, to 25 minutes depending on which teeth you want to um, get these releasing of these movements and, and, and I'm, I'm in and out. The patients have a very pleasant experience. So I want to explain quickly what my goal is about the actual device and then we'll get into the science and we'll talk a little bit further. For those of you who have questions, you can type away and I'll answer them as we go along. We are live and let's get going with the actual device itself. So real quickly, the device, the accelerator, uh, which we currently use in my practice, and I'll show you a follow-up device as well. It features a disposable, and it's convenient package, it's sterile. Uh, it has a, a depth uh, with LED in indicator. I really like that because as we show the adjustable depth, with, which is three millimeters or five millimeters, seven millimeters, uh, this allows the indication of the light to kind of help the doctors say, well, we've gone far enough and there is a retractable tip. It is a surgical stainless steel uh, tip. This is very important because we don't want tips that are going to break in the bone. We don't want to cause trauma. So we're going to learn the science because I've had some doctors that some of you are asking me a question about whether or not this is a injectable or is there liquid? Are you putting in something into the bone? And the answer is absolutely not. The science, which we'll explain in just a few minutes, has to do with being able to make that bone and in helping us that less dense. We don't want to have a, a, a teeth movement in concrete, but rather a nice uh, a gel gelatin, if you will, much easier. But we don't want to destroy bone either. So you're going to help in that accelerated tooth movement predictable tooth movement by allowing the bone using this device in getting the teeth in the position that you've wanted. So let's talk about the Accelerator RT. This particular device has a disposable tip and I know in the orthodontic community they're very happy with having disposable tips. Me, I like the one-time use. I'm happy with the uh, Accelerator itself but you, you know, some of the uh, orthodontists or some of the GPs that are using it across the U.S. right now, uh, they like to have the disposable tips and it's very great. Uh, you have a, a sterilizable handle. Um, you have a unique fluted angle. It minimizes the, the soft tissue impact so that it's actually end cutting and front cutting. Um, you basically, I'll show you a video on how we use these. It has the same effect as the accelerator. Uh, it's just some doctors like to have the disposable tip rather than the entire device being thrown out, and there's that option for you doctors as well. Uh, typically, if you have a two disposable tip option, that
that has uh, an enhanced clinical accessibility and it's a large handle. I like the textured grip and uh, it, it, it increases the stability and the hold and some of us doctors like that and for me any company that is going to be in my practice, that is going to be my partner, any company that is going to help my dentistry become better every day, I need to make sure that it's not only innovative, but it's revolutionizing the, the movements. And I see these companies like Align Technology, the propels in the world. I've seen these uh, again and again that become a partner to the office. So I've been very happy with their tracking and they've been published multiple times, but in my particular office, I'm going to show you cases, and that's the wow factor for me. In the orthodontic world, how it works. So how does the Propel work? Well, we know that we want the rate and remodel of the patient's treatment in the bone. We know that biologically, we have what's called cytokines. Cytokines create an inflammatory process that allows macrophages, or if you recall doctors back in the dental school, we used to look in histology and look at the microscope and seeing those osteocytes and producing osteoblastic activity that are giving us bone remodel and osteoclastic activity that take away the bone. This happens in our body typically in these cycles of 14 days or so and you know osteocytes again proliferate and create more osteoblasts and this happens until you create a trauma, a cytokine activity. When you create that trauma, that cytokine activity, you end up having inflammatory process. Macrophages start to eat away so your osteoclastic activity starts to increase. And the science behind this is very simple. You want to have less bone building, less dense bone, but rather increased trauma will give you a scenario where now you're balancing that tooth movement and allowing the tooth to move in the bone easier without destroying bone. So incorporating Propel in the patient's orthodontic uh, treatment typically, in my opinion, reduces 50% or more. Now you're going to see the cases. And at what point is Propel indicated? Well, first, challenging movements. You've seen some of those cases I showed you earlier, some of the canines or laterals that are locked in. You want to sometimes accelerate the tooth movement, maybe change the aligner once a week rather than every week, uh, every two weeks. We can do that. We're, we're, we're creating an accelerated movement by just simply introducing that cytokine activity to the bone. We can use it in conjunction with any orthodontic model, whether it's Invisalign, uh, wire brackets, or other aligner type treatments. Now, what are the contraindications? This you must know that if the patient is uh, compromised systemically, if the patient is on some sort of steroid treatment or anti-inflammatories, obviously we're going to talk a little about inflammation. We want the inflammation, the cytokine and the osteoclast uh, activity and the macrophages to increase. We don't want to give it an anti-inflammatory in order to reduce that inflammation. So these patients um, who also have been uh, treated with uh, you know, uh, biphosphonates or you've seen the, uh, some of the Fosamax. Uh, these are some of the bone uh, treatments that we're not quite um, clear on, on, on using Propel on these patients. So they're at this point contraindicated. So typically if a patient's on some sort of steroid treatment or anti-inflammatory, you definitely want to um, not consider Propel for those. Now I have a question for the audience. And my question is, is greater force equal to faster movement? Meaning if you put a harder push on a tooth, a stronger push on the tooth, are you going to get a rapid movement? And this is a big question because you have to understand the mechanics and the biomechanics of tooth movement. So to so simply put, can you modify the magnitude of force in getting a tooth movement faster? Can I put more pressure, put this Mack truck and get this tooth moving? And the answer is absolutely not. By putting greater force on a tooth, what you're doing is you're actually banging against a bone and some hard substance, some hard concrete, and that could possibly risk root resorption and other traumatic forces. So at this point, what do we want to do? We want to create a bone that is 
a little bit less dense. And that would not need a greater force, but rather we need to get that bone. And the terms and mechanics and the biological mechanism that you need to know are these doctors. Simply said, in looking at this slide, you remember our, our, our systems, our bone system, the tooth, the cortical bone, and, and the three layers of bone. Well, what we need to do is realize in these roots, we're trying to create a movement. And if you recall, in our bone system, the osteocytes create bone osteoblastic activity. And for us, we want to create that osteoclastic and try to get some sort of a bone that's not so strong. Now, we're not destroying bone. We're not giving horizontal bone loss. We're not giving vertical bone loss. We're talking within the cortical scenario of introducing a small trauma. So some terminology, if you remember, bone cells, osteoblast. Osteoblasts are bone forming, as I mentioned. Osteocytes are the actual bone cells. Osteoclasts are bone resorption cells. So how does this work? Well, as you start to see and you realize that you need to understand that the substance that, uh, that, that creates, and, and the word cytokine, uh, the, 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 the movement that's needed, these are all signaling cells and molecules. So let me just put it to you in the simple terms. You want to move teeth? The necessity of needing teeth is orthodontic force. It creates inflammation. Inflammation creates cytokines. Cytokines, which are the inflammatory process, create bone remodeling. Bone remodeling then starts to change and becomes a little bit less dense. Now the tooth starts to move. And if you now introduce a quick trauma or osteoperforation to the bone, now, um, by the word trauma, I don't want you to misunderstand me because what we're doing is we're doing an osteoperforation in the bone. Now, you're creating that inflammatory process, the cytokine and bone remodeling, and you're creating a best soup and recipe for tooth movements without adding extra force. You know, you need three things to move teeth, space, time, and pressure. You create enough pressure on the tooth, you create space on the tooth, and you create and give it the time in that inflammatory process to raise, you're going to get a tooth, tooth movement. So by us, we can now change the aligner every week. You have the attachments on the tooth, and now we're going to introduce osteoperforations in the bone in allowing the tooth movement. What's important in orthodontic treatment is you do not give these patients any Motrin or Advil. Because what happens in dentistry, if you do a root canal extraction, that's wonderful. Any of those things you can do by giving them an anti-inflammatory. But we want inflammation, so you want to avoid giving these patients anti-inflammatories during the use of Propel or during actually any uh, uh, orthodontic treatment. So cytokines then play an important role in activating bone remodeling. And bone remodeling is the basis for orthodontic tooth movement. And if you understand this concept and you understand that we now have to create this bone perforation and create that cytokine production, then you increase the rate of bone remodeling and decrease the bone density. That, my friends and doctors, are simple creating that accelerated cytokine activity. Now, there are many types to do this. There are many, many different devices and many different procedures in the market today. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk a little bit about what you can do. Now, back in the earlier times, prior to me knowing Propel, that's actually the oral surgeon that I used. And if you look at my, my um, slip here, my referral slip simply says, Wilkodonics, I need help. And the oral surgeon knew exactly what I meant. I need to create, and this is simply what happens. You send the person to an oral surgeon or periodontist, they lift the gum back, they create with a high-speed burr little cuts into the bone. And the surgeon must do this, specialist must do this, they put the gums back, and typically they, take, they have to take a, at least two or three days off from work, and now the teeth are going to move fast. And trauma has been introduced, 
instead of, of uh, osteoperforation, they're really perforating the bone at this point. But this is called Wilkodonics. And this is some, prior to propel some of my extreme difficult cases, I was doing about three or four years ago and referring it to Dr. Haas, board certified oral surgeon, very well known, and I'm a colleague and a speaker, and we, that's what we did. The other option in you creating this accelerated movement is, is by giving them a soft tissue method by just simply taking the scalpel and going around the collars of the gingival uh, uh, third of the tooth, and the periodontist does this, you can, you know, uh, create that cytokine activity by adding that type of trauma or that type of gum um, treatment, and what you're really doing is allowing the teeth to uh, bone to remodel by, in, again, introducing that inflammatory cytokine activity, okay? Now, as we go along and you start to see these treatments, there's a vibration method. The vibration method is great because now it's gentle, it, it's micro pulses, uh, it's allowing to get that cytokine activity. The problem is it's not very um, effective in my opinion, in my office I've used it a couple of times, some of the, it's very expensive, patients have sometimes dropped it, um, you know, and, and, and sometimes it's uncomfortable, you have to have this in your mouth uh, consistently vibrating and the, the, the current uh, products in the market are not really um, effective enough in my practice that I can, this is a, a thousand, sometimes fifteen hundred dollar pricing to the patient. And in my particular case, I needed something a little bit more um, up to date, if you will, and, and less burden on the patient in having this in their mouth. So I typically, at this point, um, have not used the vibration method for the past year. Uh, I've been very uh, keen on saying, well, how do I save money? Well, there's another option. You can do what's called a tissue punch. You can take your high-speed burr and just simply arbitrarily start creating holes in the bone. Not necessarily the best way, but there's a very danger of the root anatomy, high-speed revolution, bone necrosis, and again, there are all these different ways of creating that cytokine activity. Now, why Propel? Why do I like this product? Not only is it FDA approved, but it performs a micro osteoperforation. And this is important in stimulating the bone activity and not damaging the bone. So let's talk about the procedure. Let's first learn about this device and how you're going to introduce this to the bone. Okay? Well, you have to have the patient rinse uh, prior to treatment. Look at the X-rays. Uh, you're gonna, you know, I like to to kind of see where the root structures are. Have the patient bite down and tap, 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 and you can kind of feel the roots of the teeth. Uh, you know, look at the X-ray. Uh, why are we looking for the x-ray? Because typically, and I'll show you in some of the cases I have, these x-rays, they have multiple uh, radio opacities. So you want them rinse with uh, a, a chlorhexidine. And where do we want to introduce this uh, micro osseous perforation is right in between where, in between the teeth, in between the roots. And there are typically two or three perforations, either mesial or distal of the tooth. And you simply want to place where the bone is and you see in the green where the acceptable locations are um, and, and you want to avoid where the roots is. You don't want to directly uh, introduce to where, the, where the, you see the roots and you, rather in between. There is a, a, a consent form and you can actually download it. I've, I've given you a site that you can download uh, to go on it's a, uh, and it's a very quick little uh, consent form. Patients go through it and for me, I'm going to show you exactly where to put. I like the two to three technique, right inter, uh, inter um, root perforations. Normally, it's buccal. I don't do lingual perforations. I'm not a fan of the triangular, but if you see sometimes you have room, you can actually introduce three little triangulars, but typically a linear uh, scenario is done. Now, I you can set it the device to any millimeters between two to three uh, between three to five to seven millimeters I'm a fan of the three millimeters for now uh, some of the more dense bone I've done five millimeters I have not done seven millimeters yet but I've been very happy with the tip in introducing how 
uh, to the patients who are going to go in and they don't feel uh, very minimal, minimal pressure is what they feel, just like a little prick on the gum line. But let me show you a quick video of how the device is being used. So we're back, Dr. Atai. As I mentioned earlier, we have a case. We're going to show you how to do the propel. Patient in for Invisalign treatment of 24 aligners from an anterior view. As you can see, there's intrusions going on, some resolving of the lower crowding. I'll show you a mandibular view of what's happening. The mandibular view from the beginning to end, we're rotating on the teeth axis. And what happens in order to do that, we need to have a bone that's going to cooperate with us. I like to propose propel. My patient's already accepted. I always like to show the patient that we are taking the zero back. The device is a device which is simply, as you can well see, that's the numbers on it. We're going to go ahead and set it at three millimeter. And I always like to use the Vaseline and kind of just put this on the lips of the patient and along the device itself. So let's go ahead and see how the device will work. We're actually going to start with the number 27 area, small little pressure. Simply, as you can see, we're in. That's typically three twists and back. That's as simple as the device. How did we do? Excellent. Excellent, the patient says. So you saw, doctors, that the light actually turned on as soon as we hit the three millimeter mark. And simply, this is what the perforations look like. It's uh, throughout the arch, wherever teeth you're planning on moving, uh, it just you know one or two uh, areas that are in, t in, in between the roots of the teeth, right to the bone. And I start at the attached level of the gingiva and just move apical towards the root. You can do two or three, depending on how much movement you're planning on doing and introducing that osseo uh, perforation. So my initial experience, my first case study, uh, was uh, I'm not sure if it's going to work. Well, I had a patient who's been in Invis Invisalign. She was, as I call the, she got the Invisalign fatigue. We had started her back in 2011, and in 2011, her teeth needed to have a lot of resolve of the crowding, and this is what the patient looked like. Upper rotations need to be resolved. Lower crowding need to be resolved. As you can see, she has a deep bite, uh, multiple issues on the gums. And she was not very compliant, and when we saw her in treating and treating, and this is what she looked like 23 months later. 23 months later, it didn't look any better, uh, or it got some improvement, but not as much. So I said, okay, uh, what is this propel? What, what is this? this, this I, need, I need some help here. And, and we started the treatment by creating mid-course. Okay, we're going to go ahead and introduce the propel into the um, and start the microosseous, uh, and this is my very first patient, so I, I kind of will show you what her face looked like when she, I told her I have to do more Invisalign. She wasn't quite very happy, you need more Invisalign, we're not quite done yet. So I gave her the option of having the Propel scenario, and as you can see, I just kind of introduced only a single uh, site. I didn't want to do, overdo it. My first time, I got nervous, just kind of introducing it to those areas, just one site in between the roots. and. She came back, I gave her the aligners, change it every week, and that's pretty much what we did for her. When she came back in after four weeks, now let me show you what she looked like prior to we start, and this is what she looked like in four weeks. Remember, she's changed the aligner once a week. Once you propel these patients, you can actually change the aligner every seven days. So uh, not only did we rapidly move her, but it looked like I had done a year's worth of work. She was excited, she was happy, and you can hear it from her. Oh, sorry. So the patient herself gives us a little testimonial uh, about how happy she was. Okay, when I did the treatment today with Propel uh, and the topical numbing stuff, didn't, I didn't feel anything. It was um, as though you hadn't done it. So we did use a topical at the time. I did not infiltrate the patient. I wasn't quite, again, so happy with, with the two years I've been struggling. And uh, sure enough, I was put right back on track by simply introducing the, um, and incorporating uh, the Propel into my treatment with her. And we see she's only been happier, and I'm finally finished with her case. Now let's talk about costs, because a lot of times, <clears throat> when you start to bring these types of treatments into your office, can you bill for it? What's the patient charge for it? How do we do this? Well, 
I have, again, all these information I've, I've loaded onto a site. On, it's uh, atai.com, A-T-A-I-I.com, and you can simply go on and download these. But what I simply did in my Invisalign pricing, I have two levels. It's either you're an advanced case or you're a moderate case. I've included the Propel treatment in some of my patients into my pricing structure. And this is important because I want to make sure I get these patients where they're happy. They're changing a liner every week. And now they don't, I don't have to worry about being the cheerleader. Are you wearing it? Are you not wearing it? And when the patients see their teeth moving faster, it's better. So I've, I've always done my pricing where it's based on the amount of crowding or the amount of spacing. How much teeth movements do we really need to do? Well, it's unpredictable. How do I know if she's going to be six months or a year? But I do know that if I introduce an accelerated or a more uh, on track, we can now do our best in getting the patient excited. Can I build the insurance for it? Well, in, I've been able to be successful in, in having an alveoplasty with no extraction under the periodontal section. And these codes have helped me uh, uh, get paid through the insurance. So yes, there are some options if the patient's a PPO insurance and has the uh, codes available. And these, again, are the D7320 or the D7321, which is alveoplasty without extraction. And you know, as you can see, we've, we, in her particular case, we were able to capitalize uh, on the teeth. And there is some reimbursement. Uh, it's not much, anywhere between 100 to 200 sometimes. But still, it does help pay for the device itself. And it also helps the patient uh, in us bundling our pricing. So we don't have to, you know, ding the patient again and again. It's part of our treatment, and it's, it's a service we offer. And if the insurance can pay part of it, even better. Again, I always have this available online for you if you want to know how to bill, how to do your treatment payment options for your patients. In, 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 in app post uh, lecture, I will also give you the site. So let's look at some of these cases. Let's look at the, some of the chief concerns of uh, some of our patients. Well, uh, for my first case, when I started really revving up into it, was a case where the, uh, we started her with with Propel. We just pretty much she had spacing, she had a history of ortho, she relapsed, she has uh, a, a problem with her TMD, and I needed to change the aligners a little faster than two weeks because she's a clencher. As you can see, she's got some cross bites. And in her particular case, when she came in on January, um, she made it very clear that she's on a time constraint. She's planning on uh, moving forward with her life and, and possibly getting married and she wants to make sure that she doesn't have any aligners when she's you know on the photos and we said okay no problem and you know in her particular case right that after the aligners were shipped to us we simply started by putting on the attachments you can see we introduced the propel right in between the roots of the teeth and I simply had her start with the aligners and she's changing the aligner every week so January we started, she got propelled in that same month, and the end of the month, aligners with attachments went on. And this is a, a, a first visit. In this particular case, you want to infiltrate the patient. You don't want to just use topical. There's a lot of work I want to go through and get it all done. So, you know, the patients are very happy in doing some infiltration. So, she came in February, and in February we had already seen progress. Now, this is February 11th, so she's about 12 days into her treatment. She's getting the spaces already closed. You can clearly see that she's not only healed, obviously healed within 24, 48 hours. The gums are completely, it's as if you were doing a periodontal probing. And her spacing on the anteriors are starting to get better. Now, remember, she had a little bit of small space and open bite already looking better in 12 days. Now, here we are. In June, her final exit with us, we couldn't believe that in six months, as promised, not only did we close the anteriors, now her decision in not having the surgery or having the option of correcting the posterior crossbite what was fine. We, we gave her the options, but in her particular case, her chief concern was premolar to premolar. And you can see that arch development looks beautiful. And for me to get the extrusions that we got out of her, which was greater than six millimeter, I'm sorry, greater than three millimeters, uh, three mils upper, three millimeters lower, a total of six millimeter upper and lower arch of extrusion, would be very difficult with just 
introducing a liner treatment by itself. And she was very happy with that outcome, and so was I. Uh, in, in the next case, you'll see we have a deep bite. We have some overjet issues we're going to address. And in her particular case, she's actually had orthodontics twice prior to seeing me. And this is what she looked like when she saw me, a overjet open bite. She had bicuspid extractions. She was told she needs surgery. And you can see she's got over, just to look at the anterior teeth protruding forward, over 12 millimeters of um, open bite and, 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 and uh, overjet. So we had a big issue. Very dense bone, as you can see in her x-ray. So is this a case that we can, A, do with Invisalign only? Is this a case, B, that the outcome is going to be ideal? And C, what's going to happen to her occlusion? Because her bite doesn't quite land. She has arch discrepancy, narrow on one, wide on the other. On top of that, her smile line, as you can see. So I needed to introduce this particular patient. We propelled her. We, we, we put the attachments on. And this is the first uh, initial propel. And you can see kind of where she looks like in March. Now remember, this case from when we started, let's go back look at the dates. This was October, and here we are in March of 2014. So in less than six months, we were able to address that 12 millimeter of overjet and the open bite, and now we're going to start working on the occlusion. Now we're going to start working on landing the bite. And you can see her smile line in less than six months looks already better. So once the anteriors are lined up and the posteriors are going to start working on the occlusion, my, this case will be close to a year. And this is what she looked like in the six-month follow-up. So not a bad result, allowing me to move teeth. Again, she had history of ortho twice. Not very uh, successful, it looks like. Not a retention protocol that she had. But for me, very successful in where she was and where she was where she landed in six months. And, you, and here, as you see, we, we're slowly moving forward with the treatment, getting better and better. And as a general practitioner, which we gave her all the options and she only wanted to do Invisalign, you know, it's not a bad scenario to have a case that's predictable. And now I know I can continue her case. And we got some a payment for it from the insurance in using the Propel system. So I always like explaining the stories. Now let's talk about some deep, deep case. In this particular case, a class three. Class three case, extrusions. Now his case, uh, where you could see the lateral and canine are barely touching on number seven and 27. Uh, they're, 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 you got about a six to eight millimeter of space between them, interarch. Again, extrusions are very difficult in my treatments with Invisalign only. And now we start to do, do a rubber band and we started patients wearing their aligners for three weeks, we're cutting the aligner. Very difficult for me to track these patients. So our decision was to go ahead and propel this patient. Again, very dense bone, very difficult to move these teeth. Uh, as you can see, that's where the propel was introduced into uh, the, between the teeth. And the patient was actually very compliant, wearing the aligners, changing the aligners every week. And as you start to see the progress, and you start to see this patient from the time it was done to the follow-up, we already are working on the extrusions. And here's what the patient looked like, three month, just a three-month follow-up. I was able to get at least a, a close to it where the laterals and the canines on 7 and 27 are just getting ready to touch. I intentionally took the aligners out so you can actually, doctors, see the posterior bite landing. So look at where he was before and look at where he is now. In three months' time, can we do that without some added help? And the answer is no. I'm a strong believer in, in making sure that the treatment that we give our patients are always on track. And as you can see, the formula is typically six weeks of aligner treatment, changing the aligners once a week. That's six trays. And about 10 to 12 weeks introducing the micro-osseous um, perforation, which would be using the Propel device. And 
That's the formula in my practice. So I call the 6-6-12 rule, and that really helps uh, the patients understand, okay, so, you know, after about 10 or 20 weeks, they may need it. Uh, normally on a patient, you may need one to two uh, introductions of Propel, and that's just about it. Uh, on, on more difficult cases, you may need a third. So what I'd like to do is kind of go through some of the processes and what's happening and take your questions as they're coming in, okay? So first and foremost, when do we use Propel? Well, understand you're accelerating the treatment, so you're changing the aligner once a week, so every seven-day intervals. You Typically, I give the patients anywhere between four to six trays. I see them in six weeks. If you have to do IPR or introduce intervoxamation, do so, and we propel these patients 10 to 12 weeks. And normally, not only are we increasing the predictability, but we only may need one or two maximum propel uh, systems. And some of these patients, maybe you've already been treating without propel, and you want to kind of reactively get started to put yourself on track, you can do that as well. And doctors, this is less than a $200 uh, purchase in my practice. Uh, and, and, you know, you'll see at the end of the slide that uh, how it makes sense in getting yourself uh, a, a, a devices that will actually warrant to a less of a cost per patient and per treatment for you. Um, in introducing this to our patients, it's very simple. We go through, and as I showed you the video, and I think I got requested to, to show the video one more time, I'll go ahead and, and show you the video one more time and how to introduce the Propel so our, um, you're very clear so what's going on. Ty, as I and we simply go through and I'll show you how you actually And what show. happens in order to do that, we need to have a bone that's going to cooperate with us. I like to propose Propel. My patient's already accepted. I always like to show the patient that we are taking the back. The device is a device which is simply, as you can well see, that's the numbers on it. We're going to go ahead and set it at 3 millimeter. And I always like to use the Vaseline and kind of just put this on the lips of the patient and along the device itself. So let's go ahead and see how the device will work. We're actually going to start with the number 27 area, small little pressure. Simply, as you can see, we're in. That's typically three twists and back. That's as simple as the device. How did we do? Excellent. Excellent, the patient says. <laughs> I, I'm always excited to show that video, and there's a lot more that I've posted into our treatments. But Propel itself, um, the company uh, has asked me to provide their promotional offer um, and, 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 and contact for participating in the webcast today. So feel free to reach out to them, and the product uh, contained the Propel, you can reach out to them directly. Um, we always in my practice, like to explain to the patients what's going on. There's a lot of information packets, a lot of uh, uh, marketing tools that you can get from the company itself. And for you doctors who are listening and for some of you who've used it, it's always great when I have excitement created. So let me go through and give you some uh, information uh, if I could. First, you can actually download if you want to directly email me, you can, at doctoratai.com, uh, and all the information that I gave you is on doctor, uh, on atai.com, A-T-A-I-I.com. There's lots of videos, lots of cases. So our, for our part one uh, of this was just kind of simply introducing to you doctors what the Propel system is, is was to introduce to you the mechanics of it. Our next session is going deeper, those of you who treat patients with Invisalign. I'm going to talk to you a little bit deeper about ClinCheck in, in, in talking case selection and we have a lot more cases. I've done myself over 56 cases uh, successfully with Propel and I'm very confident that this will be a treatment for most of your patients that will get help in staying on track. And those of you who have uh, a aligner treatment or wire brackets, it's still a viable tool I'm uh, trying to add to your team and your office. So I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of your questions. I know one of the doctors had asked me and had emailed prior to this about 
uh, information that he was asking. Uh, I'm going to go through and show you this question one more time where they were asking me about the types of um, treatments, why can we not use a high speed, and again, as I mentioned to you before, uh, you can, I don't recommend it, um, you'll probably destroy unless you have very delicate hands uh, or, or very a small burr where it's just kind of going in the tissue on back, typically this tissue punch or the high speed is very, very um, aggressive and can cause bone necrosis. And another doctor's question in asking me where to put the propel, well, it's right in between the roots. And really, you don't have to go so far apical, but just know that you're trying to create that cytokine activity. You're trying to create that uh, microosseous perforation to create that inflammatory process. So don't worry if you've done two or one. As you saw in my earlier first case, uh, it was very difficult for me to uh, actually calibrate the patient of where to put, what to do, and she even had some uh, a loss of gums and, and dehiscence, which I'll show you again. In her case, you know, uh, it, it, it turned out just fine. And if, if you see where we've, we've put this, um, right along, and you can simply see these in between the roots. And another question coming through, asking me about, and I'll show you this case real quickly, um, asking me about the formula. Again, do I see my patient six weeks? Well, look, average patients that you're going to see uh, are, are about four to six weeks in your practice if you're changing the aligners once a week. So is it six weeks? Do you have to see them in six weeks? The answer is you don't want to go beyond that. If you want to see them sooner, you can. So you can see them in four weeks. That means they've done at least eight weeks of Invisalign trays because you're changing them every week rather than every two weeks. So I don't want to go beyond seeing the patient greater than six weeks. So I typically hand six trays at a time. We IPR as needed. The patients heal up very nicely post-treatment. And usually, this is what they look like when, they, when the actual uh, uh, microosseous perforations have been done. So it's not that they're bleeding all over the place, but you do need to have them rinse with chlorhexidine, make sure that they're clean and uh, patients are being sent out with at least their aligners. You do not tell them to give Motrin. So that was another question that came through. And I wanted to make sure that you guys are uh, on a on the right track. Let's see another question coming in. If you're typing in questions, I'll be more than happy to keep taking them as they're coming along. Um, there's multiple cases. Uh, the question of pricing that is going through, I base my pricing again on the amount of crowding and spacing that the patient has, not on time. So if the patient comes in with an overlapping of teeth that I know is greater than six millimeters of crowding, I have a particular price. If I have less than six mils of crowding, I have a different price. So a lot of these uh, pricings are based on the level of movements of teeth, not on the time. So adding the Propel keeps me on track. You can charge the patient a few hundred dollars if you like or bill the insurance if you like. Um, or at this point, you can kind of incorporate it into your treatment plan and that's what we typically like to do. I'm very happy with patients coming back and saying, oh, I like what I see, and the patient testimonials that will follow in the next uh, slide, I always, in the next uh, webinar, I always like talking and showing the patients because uh, other patients get to see what their friends and colleagues, uh, what their friends are, are talking about because they were the ones who uh, re reported them. So if you have, let's see, when do you, Dr. Rick Mars, let's see, when do you, whoop, question went away. So I had a question from a doctor, it's, it came through as when do you. I just have a, a can you re-ask that question again for me? It was a Dr. Rick Mars. If you can ask me that question one more time, um, it did fly off my screen, I apologize. Um, so going back to the fee, when do you start Propel? Thank you. When do you start Propel? So in this particular case, I am always starting Propel. Hello? There we are. Sorry. I always like to start the Propel right at the treatment time 
of aligners, first aligners. So I'm a fan of starting with the first aligner, and as soon as I put in the first aligner, we put on the attachments, then at that point we're going through and we are putting on and starting the actual Propel treatment. So first visit, the patient gets on attachments. First visit, whether you like to use topical or a local injection of infiltration, and at that point you introduce the Propel. You see the patient back, if you like, in the next four or six weeks. They typically heal up in the two to four week time period. So I have one more question coming in. When is the next when is the next week? Okay, let's hold on a second. Okay, so when when is the next visit? The next visit is typically anywhere between four to six weeks. You bring the patients back. I don't bring them back 24 hours after. They heal up nicely. Again, that as if you've done a periodontal probe. And when do we decide that the patient needs more Propel? Okay, so if you see this particular patient, she's tracking beautifully. If the patient's tracking fine, they're changing the aligner every week, you're fine. I've had cases, like you saw in that class three, where I had to actually continue in giving the patient additional, and that's why you saw the attachments removed, additional Propel. So in some of the cases, you want to get those extrusions down, you may have to add and do one more treatment of Propel. You don't want to do it prior to 10 to 12 weeks. You have to do it after the 10 to 12 week time period. Okay? So in you deciding how many Propels you need, if you have 30 aligners on a patient, and you're only you're giving them you know 10 to 12 weeks of movements and they're changing every week you know you're going to need additional propel but if your aligners come back as 10 or 12 aligners then you probably need only one device that's another way to calibrate if you've if you're an Invisalign doctor with the clinch access to the clinch check how do you determine can't see these questions fully. Let's take a look and see if I can get this expanded. Um, how do you determine, Dr. John? How do you determine where the perforations and are placed, and how the pressure, how many per tooth? Okay, so determination of how many propels and where to put. So let's talk about that a little bit deeper. So when you see on my slide the. Um, microacid perforations. On molars, I typically do one or two because all I'm really doing on molars are typically uprighting. On laterals, on canines, on those stubborn laterals, I should say, and premolars, typically I do two to three linear perforations. So the ideal positioning for these patients is in between the roots, as I showed you earlier, and two to three, if you are kind of reaching on the uh, vestibule and you're going apical, that's a little bit too deep in. So normally two to three is maximum. On the molars currently, because I'm doing a little bit of uprighting, not much movements on the molars and premolars, but I still want them to, since we're changing a liner every week, doctors, you're going to need to consistently keep that bone uh, less dense. So you can't just propel one tooth on a canine and throw away the, the device. The device is good one time uh, on the disposable tips one time as well. So you might as well, any teeth you're moving, and there's movements built in, in this case molar to molar, I was actually moving these teeth, I'm going to go ahead and propel those inter roots and in between the roots of the teeth. So let's see another question coming in. I think I answered the question of when is the oh when oh the question is when is the next webinar? The next webinar I I think once I so a couple of things once we go to the uh, end of the session you're going to get uh, an audience member um, you're going to get the CE test so you'll get that if there's a link right after the webcast and at that point I think the next one will also be announced. I think it's, it's, it's coming up and we're trying to do it consistently on the next month basis. So um, I will give you 
of that right after the link. I think it's going to be in the next three to four weeks, which we'll announce. Uh, any other questions? Okay, I think that's it. We've got five more minutes before we um, conclude, so if there's any other questions, I'll take it. I will read you this final real quick that the audience, uh, you got understand that you will get a email with a link to the test after the webcast for your CE units. And if there are, oh, one more question coming in. Um, Kristen Edwards, September. Okay, here's the answer. I just got the answer that it will be in September. Thank you for that. That our next webinar will actually be in September. Um, do you propel with the trays on? Uh, you don't have to. Um, the aligners, if, if you're coming, if the patient, so when our first visit, when we see the patient, we don't want to have all that blood beforehand, not that there's much blood, but if there's going to be an etching of teeth and plain attachments, you want to get all the etching done, all the attachments placed on, you put on the aligner, everything fits fine, great, you can take the aligner off and do the propel. So I always like to do the propel as the last one, but some patients, as you can see, you know, and, and, and when, when you have some tissue area and some, some, some thickening of the tissue, you'll have a little bit of uh, bleeding. That's not a problem. Uh, it does stop, just like any other uh, poking as you give the injections to patients. And I don't like having the aligners on when I propel. So the answer is I, I'm not a fan of leaving the aligners on to do the propel. All right, and then uh, would using diode, can you okay, would using diode laser make gingival healing go quicker? Um, you know what? I have a laser. I have not tried it. That's a great question. So post treatment, can if you use a uh, diode laser, uh, can you make the gingiva heal quicker? Now there's a lot of research that has been done with diode lasers, and it does aid in healing. And and Dr. Johnson, let me tell you, I think that you might be onto something. I do believe that it will help. Um, but I have not tried it myself. And as far as the combination therapy, um, it, it, there's, I'll, I'll give you the, um, the quick laser there's uh, uh, on, the, on the journal, the laser there, in, and I will put this post uh, webinar, there's a lot of diode treatments with ortho, and can you combine the two treatments? And the answer is yes. There's been a lot of research done on that. It does help with the acceleration, I have not done the Propel combo or the laser diode by itself and a liner treatment. So, you know, I, I, even though I have multiple lasers in the practice, I, I have not done it yet. Do you use Propel with brackets? You can absolutely use Propel with brackets. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of orthodontists at, currently in the um, orthodontic world that are using brackets. They do bicuspid extraction and they absolutely propel those patients and they move rapidly and they love it. You can absolutely use uh, propel with brackets. Uh, good to know. I, e I may email you later, giving it, try a couple of people. No problem. I will, I will you, you, you can, my email, let me put up real quick, is doctor at a tie.com and you can email me and I will send you any laser information at all and just to, not to sidetrack but uh, there's a lot of good um, um, information on that. Okay, to recap, no frequency in the three moons. Okay, I have, I'm just reading the question, sorry, so the, the question if you feel you need to, so to re, this is the question, so I'm going to read it out loud, no more, uh, so to recap, no more frequent than every three months to change to change aligners every week. Question, if you feel you need to propel one more time, do you charge for that even if you do not propose that at the beginning of the treatment? Ah, that's a great question, uh, Dr. Jones. And the answer is right here. If you look at my form, my propel fee, so this is why I break down my fees. So if my fee of my orthodontic treatment, whether it's wire or in design, and the Propel fee, my fee as a Propel fee is $550, whether I do one or two. And that's what I bill the insurance. 
Now you decide if you're going to do once or twice. If you know the patient is a difficult case, you're probably going to do at least two devices. Okay? Now, that's built in. Some of you doctors have been throwing in the retainers or the splints. Well, here's my answer to that. Look at my, I'm going to show you, oh, here we go, it went off again, sorry, give me a second. It will show you that I actually go through and I explain to them that retainers are always extra. So my, I don't give away retainers. I'd rather do that 550 in the Propel treatments, whether I need one or two. And if you look at my devices, I have two devices in there, automatically built in. But I will charge them for retainers. Patients have no respect for retainers. They always think it's a, it's a, it's a gimme. And what happens at the end, two years later, they have relapse. So I need to make sure they understand there's a fee for retainers. So in my practice, I stopped adding retainers as my treatment inclusive with my orthodontic. Rather, I've made it a la carte. As you can see on the screen, retainers are always necessary and are additional fee. And this, again, is on the site of Atai.com that you can download under the front office uh, fees. And I think we're at our final end, so I will finish up in giving you, again, the final slide of the promotion that Propel has asked me to uh, give you doctors. And I've enjoyed this. This was my first uh, webinar with, with so many questions, so many active minds. I love it. And I have loaded all the information on Atai.com. Right after we finish our webinar today, you'll get the link for your CEs. And our follow-up will be in September for our part two. And we'll go a little bit deeper, doctors. I thank you so much. I really welcome you uh, to the Propel World. Thank you.